Our next topic in service integrals is actually a generalization of something we've already seen, Green's theorem. So Green's theorem had, had two forms, and the form we want to talk about is the circulation form. It said that if you, need, if, you, if you have this vector field, so imagine these little arrows here representing the flow of some fluid or um, some force, and you want to find the circulation um, around this curve in a counterclockwise direction, Green's theorem gave you a way to do that instead of using a line integral, using a double integral, so an, area, an integral over the interior. Remember, there were just two ideas to Green's theorem. The first idea is that if you have a tiny patch here, like let's say a rectangle, and you find the counterclockwise circulation around that tiny rectangle, it turns out to be, um, assuming your vector field has components m and n, it turns out to be um, n sub x minus m sub y times the area of that tiny patch. So sometimes we call this the circulation density because it's what you multiply by the area to get the circulation. So it must, it must be circulation per unit area times the area would give you the circulation around that patch. Okay, that's only approximately true, but the approximation gets better and better as you, um, as you make smaller and smaller little sub-rectangles for this. The second idea Oh, and this was a way of kind of remembering the representation because if you took your vector field and you embedded it in three dimensions, so put a little zero on the end, and then you did you did the uh, you cross the del operator, which is d d x, d d y, and d d z. Let's see, I need an i j and a k up here. Then and dot it with k. This is going to pick out the k component, which is n sub x minus m sub y. So. This is just a way of remembering what it is by using our del notation. So you just have the curl dotted with k. Now, just, just to point out, you have the cross product and the dot product. So you think, well, uh, which operation to do first? But you can see if you were to do the dot product first, f dot k would be a scalar. And you can't cross a vector operator um, with a scalar. So you'd have to do the cross product first. So when you write this, you can tell that it has to be this way. There's no other way to do it. Okay, so that was the first idea of Green's theorem. The second was that if you had the circulation around this region and the circulation around an adjoining region, so we took the circulation around this region plus the circulation around that region, the circulation on this shared region would cancel because the only difference is that the unit tangents are different and so they just have opposite signs and so whatever, whatever contribution to the circulation came from going this way is canceled by going that way. So you get the circulation around the shared boundary by summing up the circulation of two adjoining regions. So the sum of the circulations around two adjoining regions gives circulation around that combined region. So the idea was, well, why don't we just break up this interior into a bunch of tiny little patches? So we're just going to partition the surface, and we'll go and we'll sum up all around the surface the circulation around each tiny patch. Of course, as we slice finer and finer and finer, um, then this is just a better and better approximation of what the circulation is around each tiny patch. And so we get that the total circulation around the boundary is just going to be the integral around the interior of n sub x minus m sub y dA. Or you could remember it using our del notation or in terms of the curl dotted with k. So that's for some area integral, right? It relates to circulation of some two-dimensional curve to um, some quantity summing up uh, something along the interior. All right, so is there such a thing for a surface? So now we're going to three dimensions. We've got some vector field, uh, three-dimensional vector field. So we have arrows in space all around this. And we've got um, some sur surface. And then the boundary of this surface is a curve. OK. and. Um, we can, we can, there is a, a similar result. Let's see, I kind of plotted the surface. You could kind of imagine it living in three dimensions. So there's the surface. You can see we've got that it's a three dimensional surface, and the red line here is the boundary to the surface. And you could ask about the circulation around this boundary. Is there a connection between that and the integral over the surface? And the answer is yes. It's, it's just a, a more general form of Green's theorem. If you have a tiny patch here, um, the circulation around a tiny patch like this um, is going to be related to, it's going to be del cross f dotted with the normal to the surface. So um, 
and then times the area of the little patch. So that's almost the same thing. Remember, it was del cross f dot k times the area of the little patch, and we had Green's theorem. Of course, if your surface is stuck in the xy plane, and so if you have a surface just in the xy plane, which is the case for Green's theorem, then of course the normal is k, because the normal has to be straight up in that case. All right. So which direction the circulation goes in is, is kind of a tricky question here. When it, was, um, when it was in Green's theorem, it was just counterclockwise as you looked down on it in the xy plane. Um, but now what we're going to do to figure out which direction the circulation is, we'll look at which direction we've picked the normal to be. Remember, there are two normals, one out this way and one down that way. So whichever direction we pick the normal to be, um, just put your right hand out and put your thumb in the direction of the normal and then curl your fingers around it, sort of like how you did the right hand rule, right? So take your right hand, put your thumb in the direction of the normal, there's your thumb, and then as the direction your fingers curl around, that determines which direction you're, you're calculating the circulation. So if we use the normals up and out of the surface, we're going to get the circulation around this way for that, for that surface. But if we use the other normal, then our thumb would be pointing down, and we'd get the circulation the other way around. OK, so that's the first idea of Stokes' theorem, very similar, just a generalization, really, of the first idea of Green's theorem. And the second idea is the same as well. If you have adjoining patches and you find circulation around some adjoining patch, you add the two circulations up, the circulation on the shared region, um, the shared boundary cancels, and you get the circulation around the combined region. So the sum of the circulations around two adjoining patches gives the circulation around the combined patch. OK, so that means if you sum up the circulations around all these tiny patches, you just start getting the circulation around this wider and wider region, right? Just keep adding them up until you get the circulation around the boundary. So this is um, the basic statement of Stokes' theorem, then. We have, this, uh, we have this quantity, right? Del cross f, not dot with k, but with n, d sigma, sum up around the surface. So here's the full statement. It says the circulation of some vector field, mnp, around the boundary c of an oriented surface s. Uh, some surfaces really don't have a consistent normal. Um, for example, a Mobius band. If you've ever taken a strip of paper and you put a little twist in the strip of paper like this, and then you glue this edge to that edge, you end up with a Mobius band. If you trace around that Mobius band, um, um, it's not orientable. So you have kind of this interesting little ring here. As you go around um, one direction, so you go around thinking, okay, this is the outside. Eventually it twists and you come back to the same point and saying that's the outside. So that's a, surf a Mobius band is an example of a surface that's not orientable. Most of our surfaces are going to be orientable, so it's not a big deal. But we just have to have a consistent normal, right? So we can determine which way are we finding the circulation. And so around the boundary C of an oriented surface S, so in the direction counterclockwise with respect to the surface's unit normal, and so with your thumb, um, looking down at your thumb basically and going counterclockwise around that, um, that equals the integral of del cross f dot n over, over the surface S. So if you want to find the circulation around the boundary, just integrate over the interior del cross f dot n. So the circulation, ah, this is kind of interesting because you're dotting with n, that's actually, this is some vector field, right? This vector field is called the curl vector field. So you're actually finding how does the curl align to the normal surface, so it's the flux of the curl. And of course, what you need to have is del cross f dot n has to be nice and defined, right? A nice little tame guy all throughout this, all throughout the, the surface. If there's a place where del cross f dot n isn't defined, there's like a little patch that you can't find the circulation around, and so you're going to get the wrong answer. We'll look at an example of that later, but that's the basic statement of Stokes' theorem. We'll go on and do some examples.